I had three cups of coffee this morning in preparation for this event. <laughs> Isn't it funny how numbers can tell stories sometimes? Two, number of pets I asked for Christmas. Four, number of shirts I got instead. <laughs> Six, number of alarms I slept through this morning due to my lack of sleep. You get the gist. Now on the topic of sleep, let me ask you all a question. During your high school career, how many of you got nine or 10 hours of sleep every night? Feel free to have a look around. Notice that it ain't very many of you at all. Don't, don't worry, I didn't raise my hand either. I'm sure we can all relate to the agony of getting up in the morning every once in a while, right? But the thing is that the human body needs a certain amount of sleep every night in order for it to function properly the following day. I'm sure what many of you have realized is that some of your lives simply do not let you get that suggested amount of sleep. It could be that you're just a really busy person and have a lot of things to attend to every day. Throughout my life, I've heard students go on about how school just starts way too early in the morning and it doesn't let them get the amount of sleep that they want. While this argument is true to a certain extent, there are some students that are completely fine with the way things are. They're able to get up in the morning, go to school, get out of school, get all their work done, and still have many hours left in the day to go do other things to be successful. Granted, many of them just go home and watch Netflix, but that's just the way things are. Knowing about this significant topic in today's world, it is in your best interest to know that many states are actually working towards changing the school schedule in order to allow students to get more sleep. Recently, California even passed Bill SB328, otherwise known as a Start School Later Bill. Although, is this a good thing for the state and country as a whole? What impacts would this have on the school system and everyday norms? Ladies and gentlemen, that's why I'm here, to answer these questions on this modern day topic. Now before we can choose a side on such an important topic, first we must realize that we have to hear from both sides of the story. Now, for the people that believe the bill shouldn't get passed, they believe that the school schedule should just remain unchanged. These people believe that the system has been this way for a very long time, and the United States has gotten this far, so why change it now? There's gotta be a lot of downsides to the bill as well, right? What many people don't realize is that huge parts of their lives revolve around the time that school begins in the morning and the time that it, it, it ends later in the afternoon. It affects mostly everyone, not just parents. For example, let's say I was a manager at a restaurant and I have to create a work schedule for all my, all my employers, right? For all the employers that have kids, I would have them start work after the time that their kids start school. This would allow them to go drop off their kids at school in the morning and then make their way over to work. What the bill would do is actually force me to redo all those schedules, including the schedules for the employers that don't even have kids, which would probably lead to me changing my own schedule and my daily life. So clearly, it's all just a huge chain reaction of changes once a key aspect in every society is altered. On that note, it is clear that the bill would only lead to scheduling conflicts with the parents. This puts many kids at risk of tardiness and truancy because they don't have means of transportation, which could often lead to increasing rates of dropouts. Many staff members are also worried about the effect that the bill would have on extracurricular activities. Including many here at Chaparral High School, coaches are concerned of when in the day they would be able to hold practices for all the students in various different sports. The bill would end up forcing them to stay on campus even longer, and they won't be able to go home until later that night. It would have that same effect on the students, because after all, they're the ones attending the practices. But here's the thing, they're gonna end up going home really late at night and still have all the work to do for all their classes, which would only mean that they have to stay up even longer into the night. Doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of the bill? They have to stay up even longer, losing more sleep. What we can get out of this argument is that basically, the bill would lead to a lot of changes and possibly even conflicts in society if it were passed. Now, as for the, as for the people that want the bill to get passed, these people have a lot of arguments up their sleeve as well. The main purpose of the bill is for students to get more sleep, right? Well, as their bodies are still growing and developing, many experts recommend around nine hours of sleep every night. But unfortunately, that's not the case, that's not the reality in most cases. Around 75% of adolescents get under eight hours of sleep every night, and 20% of those get around six hours or less, including me sometimes. This is all due to the fact that schools just simply begin too early in the morning. Some middle schools even begin around 7.45 a.m. or earlier, which would only lead to bus pickups occurring past 5.30 a.m., which is oftentimes before the sun even rises. 
Sleep deprivation is often blamed for many unhealthy things. These unhealthy things include anxiety, behavior problems, impacts on brain development, depression, and even suicidal ideation. It's often blamed for many physical problems as well. It puts students at risk of getting diabetes, obesity, and high blood pressure, all due to the fact that they would be eating more than they would if they got an adequate amount of sleep. Without the problem of sleep, it would mean that the students would become less reliant on coffee and their grades would most likely rise as they would become more alert during the school day. Of course, the school day would be closer to the middle of the day instead of the beginning of the day. These people that would like the bill to get passed care a lot about how much a student sleeps every day, and I agree with them. Sleep is very important. After all, people will be sleeping for 33% of their lives. Now, both arguments make very good points. Sleep is very important, but the bill would lead to a lot of changes and possibly conflicts. After presenting both of these arguments to you, can I get a raise of hands of the number of people that believe the bill should get passed? All right. How about the bill shouldn't get passed? Interesting. Where do I stand on this topic, you may ask? Well, I actually don't agree completely with both. After further looking, further looking into the bill, I noticed that something was quite off. What I found was that basically it stated no schools could begin before 8.30 a.m., including any zero periods and before school classes, along with the governor vetoing it, but it's in the Senate right now. So the idea that I got out of it was that they're basically trying to take the whole school day that's present right now and moving it up further into the morning, right? But is the result that they want necessarily what they're going to get? Allow me to explain. What we have here is a diagram representing roughly a whole day, starting at 12 a.m. in the morning and ending 12 a.m. the next day. And everything in between is all the general stuff that you would find in a typical student's day. Now let's apply the idea of the bill. They want to take that school block and shift it further into the day. But here's the problem. A day is only 24 hours long. That's just Earth's nature. So you have to make room to move all the blocks down. So what we'd have to do is take out that sleep block on the end and then move all the, sh well, move all the blocks down. And then you'd end up with this. As you can see, the school has been moved farther down and the sleep blocks have been moved. Now here's the big problem that I found with the bill. Notice up there that both the sleep blocks did not change in size meaning that the students are still getting the same amount of sleep even after the bill gets passed. The only difference would be that they would be sleeping at a different time in the day. Now this uses clearly proves that the bill would almost have no effect on the amount, of, the amount of sleep that a student would get. But I may have an alternative. For the purpose of this presentation, I conducted a bit of research on my own. I created a survey and had as many people as I could from Chaparral High School take it. So, what one of the options was, should school start later in the day? And a good 58% of people believe that yes, it should, which is a lot compared to 10% of people that didn't think it was a good idea and things should just stay the way that they are right now. But I added in a third option, and as you can see, it was to end the school day earlier in the day, or basically cut it down. A good 32% of people agreed with this. Now I know it's a long stretch, why would you shorten a school day down if its school is so important. Now what I have noticed is that many students spend countless minutes or even countless hours at school doing absolutely nothing, which is productive, <laughs> which is really unproductive. And what I find is that if we were to give them that time outside of school, it would lead to them exploring other things other than academics. It could lead to them um, De developing different skills that aren't necessarily taught in an academic classroom. It could allow them to have more time to discover their passions, and it could lead to them being even more productive and potentially even more successful. Isn't that the American dream for everyone to be successful? So why not give this a try? Ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, I'm Nelson Rodriguez Cadenas, and those are my 10 cents on this California bill. Thank you.